Hi everyone, thanks for joining us here in the studio today. Uh, I first want to acknowledge what's going on in the world and wish for peaceful resolution to all conflicts. So I think it's important to acknowledge. Um, we are going to do things a little bit differently today uh, than normal. We're going to hold all questions until the very end today. So we'll have a more just a little bit more quiet, quiet's good, a little more peaceful demo uh, as, as I'm working today. And then we'll open it up to questions at the very, very end. I want to start with a reading. I've picked something that I think is really apropos. And uh, I'd like to do it because it gives everyone a chance to get onto the stream before we start the, the demonstration. And this is from How to Be an Artist by Jerry Sauls. And um, it's, artists are cats, art is a dog. I know this sounds ridiculous, but you call your dog and it comes right over to you. It places its head on your lap, slobbers, wags its tail, asks to go for a walk, a mir miraculous direct communi communication with another species, species. Now call your cat. It might look up, twitch a bit, perhaps go over to the couch, rub against it, circle once, and lie down again. What am I saying? That the way the cat reacts is very close to the way an artist communicate, that the way artists communicate. The cat is not interested in direct communication. The cat places a third thing between you and it, and it relates to you through this third thing. Artists, like cats, communicate abstractly, at a remove, this is why artists hate to be asked what their work means. Even if they make a picture of a landscape or a race riot, it's not about those things. It's about much more, including itself, its materials, how they were used, and how the artist sees the world. Art for itself is much more like a dog, never quite behaving, making a mess, costing a lot, always making you get supplies, but paying you back in wonder and delight. And then one other little thing, one other page to read. It's short, and I think it's also really apropos. See as much as you can. Critics see by standing back, by looking at a whole show, comparing individual works, mark, marking advances, regressions, repetitions, failures within the context of an artist's previous work and that of their peers. Artists see very differently. They get up very close to a work. They inspect every detail, its textures, its materials, its makeup. They touch it. They look at the edges, peer at the object from every angle. You can always tell the artists in museums. They're the ones with their faces an inch from the surface of the work, like one dog sniffing another. What are artists doing? They're seeing how it was made, what techniques, ingredients, gestures, and accidents are in play. When I've asked artists what they're looking at so intently, they always say things like the shininess, the bumpiness, the scratches on the side, the way it's mounted, the printing technique, the pink styrofoam backing, how they left the flies on the surface. All these little matters loom large when they appear in someone else's work. This is why artists know that bad art teaches you as much as good, good art and maybe more. And that brings me to what I want to talk about today with uh, my new work. I kind of touched on it last week during the stream, but didn't really, hadn't really absorbed it enough to really talk about it at, at length. And not that I'm going to talk about it in a really lengthy way today. But um, you may have seen some of the work that I've been posting on Instagram. And if you're after the stream today, you can hop on to the, my Instagram and check the work out and spend some more time with it if you'd like. We put the link in the description of today's video so you can check that out. Um, as, a, as a career, you know, I've been making art my entire career as an illustrator, as a landscape painter, gone through struggling to find different modes of, of selling and of teaching. Um, always kind of trying to push myself forward and kind of find that next big thing. And it's hard to do, and it, it, particularly in the context of doing the lessons. Um, 
I get really wrapped up in making sure that you guys can see every little thing and that I can explain every little thing. But the fact of the matter is, and alluded to in um, Jerry's uh, little uh, couple pages there, not everything is so definable. There are so many things about making art that are um, enigmatic. It's just kind of mysterious. So what I, um, I did a few weeks ago is I came into the studio with the intent of just letting that mystery be and invite it in and just kind of stand there at the easel and, and kind of punch away at it a little bit and not, um, not try to explain it, not try to show you guys how to do it, just to make art. And I, that's been a rare occurrence for me over the past couple of years in particular. So it was something um, very uh, wonderful. And some wonderful things did in fact happen for me. Uh, and then I'm really, really excited about the, these new pieces. And the, um, what got me going into this direction was a request uh, from my team to do some horses for the lessons. And I said, well, to myself, I'm thinking, you know, this internal dialogue, well, I haven't done horses in a really, really long time. I've drawn them, but I haven't painted them. How am I going to do that? So one morning, one weekend morning, I went into my studio and just grabbed a bunch of stuff. I grabbed different tools, um, gesso, um, just, you know, just loaded, loaded myself up and came out here, got different paper, different orientation, big, which is something I don't typically do as much any, any longer. I put my music on and I started in, and I invited in the mystery, I invited in the fairies, and they showed up a little bit, I think, and I'm really, really happy about it. And I'm happy to say that I kind of have found a path to share it, and I, I think with you guys in a way that makes sense. And I, may, I might not be able to explain every little bit of it, because I can't. But um, I can ex explain some of it, so I will try to do that. So let's just, um, let, so I, what, I, what I think um, I've been doing the last, um, you know, few weeks since this work, just kind of greasing the wheels for getting to that next level. And I don't feel like this work has arrived in any real sense. But it is a step forward. It's like reaching, reaching a new plateau for me that feels really, really good, really, really exciting. And um, my intent is to share it as much as I can with you guys. So let's go over and take, take a real look at some of these. Starting with, I guess we'll start with the, can we start with the horses in the center? So this is the first one that I did. Um, and the Kitty and Friends workshop, which is on sale right now, there is a version of this painting as a lesson uh, in that workshop that we add, just added. So anyone that previously purchased Kitty and Friends, if you go back and log on to the website, that lesson will be there for you. So if you've already bought Kitty and Friends, it's there. And Kitty and Friends is on sale right now until March 1st. So um, now, there, now there are six lessons, including a version of this. So this is painted on this aqua ground. This is um, Reeves BFK printmaking paper. Most of these are done on that. So it's a way different surface. That was the other thing that I, that I did differently. And in a way, I'm kind of, uh, wish that I hadn't added so many new things <laughs> to the to the work because I'm not really sure what was the you know was there one thing that just clicked for me and you know took me in this direction or was it a combination of things I I imagine it's that it's this combination just as uh, things are swimming and glittering together 
Um, and this guy is um, also on the printmaking paper. I made this kind of abstract background, uh, mostly with a brayer, but I also spattered it and brushed it on. And what that allowed for was to have this, this kind of you know, interesting abstract mix, but then I was able to carve out the horse and, and let this dark play against the silhouette of the nose. And then down here, the background gets light. So his, his nose here is, is dark against that. So the, that, that play is really evident in the, in the work. Lots of line work. Line is something that I've been, you know, I love, I love that act, very human act of making a mark. And this is done with a Conti, and then there's pastel in here, real limited palette. And then moving on, this guy, um, I like the energy of it, the gesture, um, the colors. It's uh, really, really fun. Um, and parts of this not quite resolved, but it's getting there. And then the lion, I don't know, he just, you know, he just works. Again, I'm using this texture. This is a brayer texture, and that just really worked really well for his mane. And then it moves over here into the background, this shift, so that he's really the background and him, there's this play between the background and the figure, figure, figure ground. Same thing here with the wolf, letting this be um, just blown out on the one side and then the silhouette on this other side. And very limited palette. The paper, the, the ground that I built has a lot of texture to it. And so the pastel is picking up a great deal of that texture. But in the case of the wolf, it really worked for his fur. And I'm happy with him. He has an intense look. And then some more colorful things that I'm playing with, the birds, the peacock, and these exotic birds over here. This one turned out nice. Um, again, just playing with abstract background and the more detailed animals and birds. And of course, I did the fox um, for the live stream last week, and he turned out well. Same kind of thing, building a textured ground, and then kind of digging those figures out of those grounds, letting them emerge. And that's really, really fun. All right, so, yeah, so you can go to the, my Instagram page to check out um, if you want to take a look at the animals in, in a little bit longer, longer look. And make sure you like them, comment on them, all that good stuff. That'd be great. And, um, yeah, and so, and, and check out the Kitty and Friends workshop. It's, it's, a, it's a good workshop. It really, it does pave the way for these kind of next level kind of pieces. Um, I, I think that it's um, it's a good it's a good workshop, and now it's even even better because we've got that extra lesson in there. All right, so today, one thing that I'm really um, I chose this English setter, and I wanted to share with you. Can we share the t the tabletop? Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Can we take Oh, there it is. Okay, I see. I see what's going on. All right. So this guy. So <laughs> I had an English setter when I was a little girl, and um, I did these. We had an English setter and an Irish setter, and I did these paintings a long time ago. I think this one says 1974. Huh? Yeah, probably. Um, and I had uh, done some pen and ink drawings. We had this. We had this beautiful little puppy, and she she wasn't one of these, but um, they're just the cutest puppies in the world. And this this little photo is me, and our English setter. So it's doing the animals is like going back to my roots just a bit. I had done this also. This was might have been the last horse that I really did as detailed as this. 
and my mom, this hangs in my mom's place and she loaned it to me um, for today. So thanks mom. And this is colored pencil on illustration board. So it's just fun to go back to your roots a little bit and sometimes your roots can set you off in a new direction. So I think that that's really, really wonderful. And um, today's reference is the sky. I've already got some ground applied here. This is a mixture of phthalo blue and that 3.0 black, and I've applied it with the brayer. And I'm planning on letting this be light over here, and then I'm going to even darken this up even more on this side so his silhouette will really come out. Now, of course, this is a different kind of um, uh, coloring on, than the one that I had when I was growing up, but I think that it's really a beautiful animal. I'm thinking to keep the palette, palette very limited today on this guy, so it's more like the wolf or the one single horse than the, um, the really colorful ones. I just think that it will look really stately. And that kind of goes along with this guy. Oh, one other thing I needed to mention. Um, the Pastel 100 came out, and I have two pieces, which you guys might recognize. Anyway, um, from the, this is the current Pastel Journal. You guys might recognize these. One I did, this one I did as a live stream. It's in the landscape division. I got honorable mention. And, and... The peppermints, which are in the monthly still life uh, lesson. So, yeah, so it's really, really nice. I'm always honored to be included in the top 100 of Pastel Journal, and there's so many beautiful pieces in there to be inspired by, so check it out. All right, thanks, Pastel Journal and all the other artists. It's really amazing. Okay, so let's get painting today. I am going to put my hair up and we'll get going. And we'll be mixing it up. Some days we'll take questions during the lesson, other times we won't. It just kind of, we'll just kind of mix it up. Um, some people really, really like to have questions during the lesson, and other people would rather just watch. So, we're trying to Mix it up, make everybody a little bit happy. Okay, so I'm going to grab a couple things that I know I'm going to want. I have these big, big chunky sticks as well out here. That, so, I, so you could see I've added another table. Maybe you can't see, but we'll show it to you later. I've added another table. So I've got my main palette, and I've got some other stuff over here now. So just kind of expanding out. All right. So. First things first on this guy, I want to add a little more uh, dark to the background before I go any further. So I'm going to do that with some pan pastel. Again, another thing that you probably don't see me use very much, but I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and get... and just come around him. I just think he'll look really, really good with a nice dark. And I'm still picking up, you know, some of that texture that I created, which is good. And then I'll just let that kind of vignette out. And how much do I want over here? I don't know. I think I want a little. I like how the photograph has a good amount of space around him. And in terms of the drawing of him, I took my time. I brought it into Procreate, played around with it. Made sure I had a nice, accurate drawing. All right. Good. All right, so 
I think what I'm going to do is start adding some of that, the light value. I don't think I'm going to head right to white at this point. I think I'm going to choose some things that are a little off-white. And I'll get his, start getting his markings in though. Um, and, and do I want to do that with something that's not quite black? Let's see. And that's probably not quite enough. And maybe I want um, something a little bluer. Because those spots are kind of gray blue. Yeah, that's, this is better. And maybe even some other lighter blue. Yeah, that's nice. So allowing myself a little bit of color without going nuts. And also allowing for, if I, if I want to add some white in here, I, I have, I can do that too. Now down here, there's a little shadowy area, area there. Um, and maybe I want some something like this or a mix in here. Get these beautiful spots on here. And once I have those, I can come back into the spots. I can get more of an idea that there's fur. On the top of his nose. And then over here, it gets a little browner right right there. It's so pretty. So bringing in a little bit of color. Now this guy, um, now, I was thinking about, when I was thinking about doing him, um, his, his eyes, we don't see that super intense sparkle in his eye, different from, say, the, um, the lion. But I still think that there's going to be enough here to give us some nice nice pop all right I'm gonna bring a little bit of this blue in here And then right here, it's kind of a little bit brown. Right here. There's even some kind of reddish 
right in here. Subtle, but it's nice. Okay, now thinking right here. So there's some color here. I'm seeing some blue. And then under here, I'm even seeing a little bit of purple. Okay, so that's kind of setting me up for putting the, that, the lighter value that I want on the top. It's cool. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. So Here. Oh, yeah, he's going to be cool. Nice. All right. So now, see, I'm still, see, I'm, I, I, I can put this white on now, and I've got plenty of room to go, and it's going to be nice and bright white. So, and I've got these wonderful hairs on the, on the ears that are going to be fun to do. almost use the paper color for some of those these spots because they they um they have that kind of indigo let's 
Let's get the eye in. I think it'll be nice to do that. There's a lot of, there's actually quite a lot of color right there by his eye. And he's got these little <laughs> eyelashes. <laughs> really, really fun. His eyes got brown and black. Different, different kind of brown. I'm going to kind of get in there and then right around his eye. There's kind of a Kind of orange. I don't want to make it too too bright there. And then Soft. Now I'm going to come in with the And try to get those eyelashes. <laughs> All right. Now back to now I think I'm going to get some color in his ear here so that I can get this kind of rolling. And that texture is already working nicely for me. thinking. Just 
Let's see, I need something a little bit lighter. There we go. And then I can get those nice real lights over the top. Now, English setters have the, the top and the backs of their heads are, have that kind of squared off thing, and I won't re really want to get that. and I still haven't gotten the lights that I want on here. This, a little bit more color maybe, be fun. Be a little bit more. be a little playful with the color. Right. Some of these spots that are really helpful in describing the form, and I, so I want to. There's a few of them that are, seem really important. Now it's starting to come together a little bit. Now let's see what we think about over here. I, I, I haven't dealt with any of this. I really haven't resolved what I'm going to do with the um, background here. But one step at a time. Oh, I also want different white. Now my intent is to soften some of these spots because they're, they're, he actually has white fur kind of going over the top of these spots, but I, I just want to get it kind of going first. Let me 
He's got a few more of them than I've got on here. But I'm not trying to do a necessarily an accurate portrait of him. Now, if you were doing a, someone's dog, you'd kind of want to get those spots to be right. But I'm, I'm not really necessarily going for that today. He's coming along. Now let's get, oops. And I got some pigment there in the background. That's okay. I can clean that up later. little edge here that I'm wanting to get. Now I do want to get the this part of his nose. I want that edge. How are we doing on time? I haven't even looked. <laughs> I haven't even looked. All right. 
let me work on his ear a little bit. And then um, I'll think about this a little bit. I'm, I I'm, haven't finished him. But on a good... got some good form starting. Oops. All right, let's get a few more things. I'm gonna just go a little faster. I'm not gonna be able to finish him completely today. Want to get an idea of what could happen over here. Just thinking about that a little bit. Let's get a little bit of the, 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 the ears are so beautiful. Get a little more dark to sort of back up the, that. I might I might decide to to make it dark up here too. I haven't quite resolved that. But that's okay. In this work, I definitely kind of finding my way. It's not it's not so obvious. And that's really exciting to me. It's kind of crazy with the fur. Some of it's in shadow, some of it's in the light.
I'm gonna take just a hint there on the end of his nose. All right, pretty soon I'm gonna take some questions if we've got them. But he's getting there. I, I definitely have to figure out what I want to do um, in terms of the background. Um, haven't quite haven't quite got there gotten there yet. And I want to work on the spots a little bit more. And I think his eye needs just a, there's just an opportunity there for a little bit of highlight. See if I can get in there and get it. Mm. I want to mess it up. A little bit more, a little bit more highlight. I'm going to get something a little bit lighter. Right there. That's nice. And those eyelashes kind of go around the eye, so see if I can manage that. It's pretty good. And let's see what else. There, this is going to be fun to figure out. Um, the The back of his head, uh, it it goes down like so, and then it comes up, and then he's got this fur. So it's doing something about like that. So I want to make sure that I get that, whatever I do for the background. And definitely get a little bit more ear. Um, I like these drips in here. I'm not sure whether that's going to work. And um, his fur is all kind of doing it fun thing in here as well, but I'm um, not sure what I'm going to do, and I'm not sure what I want for the rest of the background either, but I'd have to play with it. But I, li I like the limited palette look for this, it's nice. This needs a little bit more. There we go. That's good. Okay. All right. I think that's enough of that for a little bit. Crop it? Yeah, should we crop it? Well, it's not really finished, but we'll, we could do it anyway. You could take a look at my sticks that I used. And yeah, cropping it might help just to decide on 
how to proceed with background. Do you want like, to straighten out the easel? And we'll just you, crop it with this one? Like this way? Yeah, that's good. All right. What do you think? Let's see. Yeah, I'm not I'm not quite sold on I mean I have to really work this and decide what that that's going to be and same thing with with this and get that all to kind of work work together. But um I like him. Also it might be fun to have a little bit more kind of like the photograph, a little bit more space in front. We'll see. But yeah, it's on on the way. Yeah, yeah. The sticks so out, pretty limited palette. Got a little bit of pop of color there in the eyes, but it's pretty, um, pretty new. So you use the pan pastel grays, some grayed um, tones here, a little bit of blue. So there, there, there. You know, there's more color than you think. So oh. nice. Okay, so I hope that was helpful or informative or fun to watch, or maybe a little bit of all of that. Do you want to have a, um, a seat, Marla? I mean, take, yeah, yeah. take a load off. Yep, I, I'm going to need it. We're doing a super stream for our monthly subscribers in a little bit, so it's a busy, busy afternoon. So. Questions? First question, everyone wants to know, what white are you using? What and white? The, and the round stick with the wrapper. The round st stick with the wrapper. This one, this is a Diane Townsend um, pastel. Um, so, and I think one of the whites was that. Um, I was using a new pastel that was white. And I also had a center lié that is white and it's really super soft. So that white is really good for um, this kind of thing because I can really get in there and press a bunch of pigment onto the paper. Cool. Um, yeah, and was the base color acrylic? The base is acrylic. It's flu it was a mixture of fluid acrylic and that 3.0 black. Let me see. Do I have it right here? I might have it right might be on the other table. Um, I can get, get it. Um, let me see where it is. Oh, thanks, Bryce. <laughs> there. 3.0 black. And this was a gift from Kevin. I think a couple Christmases ago, right? Yep. Thank yep. you, Kevin. It's good stuff. Yeah, it is. It's really black. <laughs> So yeah, I'll, I probably will play around with this background a little bit more. I'm not you know sure what I'll do. I might what I just thinking about. It, I might bring some more pastel on there and then take some um, isopropyl alcohol, move that pastel around, get a little bit more. Um, it, it's it's not as fun as I would like it to be <laughs> that background. So and earlier um, you used um, some pan pastel. Yeah. Uh, what did you use to apply that? I used uh, coiled cotton. I'll show you that. I have that right here too. Like this. And it, so it comes like in, in a long, you know, coil. So you can just pull off a little bit. I like it better than the balls <laughs> because it just seems like there, it's, it's, there's more to it. So, yeah. And, um, the acrylic layer that you applied, you applied that with a brayer. Can you just tell everyone what a brayer is? Yeah, this is a brayer. I want to have several of them. And they make for really interesting texture depending on the paper that you're using and how much paint you use to apply it. To uh, How much paint you use when um, applying it to the paper. And um, yeah, the, the Black 3.0 is, is a product. It's actually a, it's like a patented product. Yes. So if you go to Black yeah. 3.0, you can find it on the internet. Yeah, you can't, it's, I, have you seen it in art supply stores? No. I have not either. So, um, it, of course, depending on your art supplier. 
Yeah, it's, yeah. it's I think they make it in England, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think you have to buy it online. Okay. But uh, a couple more questions that I yep. sort of jotted down while the chat was going. Okay. Um, was there a, a texture to the, did you do, did you use clear gesso? No. Do you add texture ever to your gesso? I don't usually add texture to the gesso. Um, that is another possibility for sure. You can add all kinds of stuff to gesso, including pumice, um, which could be um, positive for uh, pastel work. But I, in this case, I didn't, uh, I felt like um, it, for, for this particular guy that I didn't want a ton of texture on the paper. The, the paint's pretty thin. Um, and that it's Reeves BFK paper, really nice paper, super soft, super yummy paper. Um, and I, the other thing I like about the paper is the deckled edge on the paper. It's really beautiful. So, yeah. Cool. And um, I have a few more okay. uh, saved. I mean, how many do you want just maybe a yeah. few more questions? Yeah, a couple more. Yeah, yeah we, can go, we can go a little bit. So um, do you suggest picking out your pastel colors ahead of time or just as we go? That's a really good question. Uh, and, I, and I think it depends on your subject and how familiar you are with it. If it's something or, or if you're looking at your, your subject and you just, that it's difficult to determine what kinds of color you want. Now, um, you know, sometimes you're going for local color, like you're trying to do realistic color. So you might be wanting to match color. Um, and if it's hard for you to see that, and it might be worthwhile picking out a few colors ahead of time, your kind of base colors of the, the main elements in a piece. But that being said, I do feel like color is a very intuitive process again one of those you know sort of intangibles that is difficult to describe and explain people often say to me things like I would never have picked that color it works so well how did you pick that color um, and some of it is just good color theory come some of it is just knowing that color bounces all around some of it's knowing that it's okay to go outside of the box and put something in that's, that maybe you don't see. So um, I think all those are possibilities. So yes, in answer, back, circling back to the question, yes, I think that that could be a good idea to select some pieces ahead of time, but I would say don't, um, don't be married to that. You know, let yourself be playful and intuitive while you're in the process, let the painting tell you what color. And um, another question. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a favorite true white and a darkest black pastel? So um, I do think the center layer for, uh, is really wonderful. Also Unison has a wonderful white white. Um, they have the center layer is soft and buttery while the Unison's just a little grittier. So, you know, maybe depending on what you're doing with it. And um, new, new Pastel has a great black. Uh, you know, unfortunately, new Pastel is going to be a thing difficult to get individual sticks. So you can't just go buy a black. Um, so I'm in the process of finding alternatives to the new Pastel line. And I'm working on it. I'll keep you posted. Um, oh yeah, Kitty and Friends. Just want to mention before we go that Kitty and Friends uh, workshop is on sale right now, and it, it, until March first, it's sixty dollars, and the uh, monthly subscribers get their extra fifteen dollar discount. And you get if you're logged into the website, you get that automatically when you check out. So it's a fabulous deal for you guys, and it's fa I think it's still a fabulous deal for everybody. Uh, it's a, kind of a gateway workshop, I think, to you know more sophisticated work with animals, and so it's a, a place to kind of get in, and then you can level up from there. The horses are in there as well, so they're a little bit more, um, I would say, uh, more advanced. So.
but they're there. Oh, and yeah, if you've already purchased Kitty and Friends, you may not realize that the horse lesson is there waiting for you. So you can access that. So that's it. I, I don't know exactly what we're going to be doing next week, but we're doing something. <laughs> so uh, anyway, have a wonderful weekend. Um, peace, and we'll see you soon.